Hello, welcome to our video lecture series on chapter 6.3, which is an inference for a difference in proportions. Our brief outline, we're going to cover a couple examples to, to tell whether we're dealing with one or two proportions. We'll look at uh, calculating standard error for difference of proportions, the central limit theorem for sample proportions. We'll um, do an example creating a confidential for difference of proportions. Look at pooled proportion. This is a kind of different concept. And then lastly, we do hypothesis testing for difference in proportions. All right, to start off, let's look at a couple scenarios to see if we're dealing with one or two proportions. And now the way you gotta think about it, if we're dealing with two proportions, there should be two separate categorical variables. And if we just have one proportion, there's only one categorical variable. I think the best way to kind of get this down is look at uh, multiple examples. So the first one I have is if you want to compare the proportion of students who use a window-based PC to the proportion who use a Mac, would this be an inference for one proportion or two proportions? This is going to be an example of one proportion. Right, we're looking at we'll have one categorical variable, the type of computer used. So we were just look at say, the proportion of those that own a PC, or look at the proportion of those who use a Mac. This is just one variable. Right? There's two categories, Mac or PC, and maybe other, but only one variable. So this is a one proportion scenario. What if you want to compare the proportion you study abroad? between those attending public universities and those at private universities. So proportion of students who do a semester abroad between public versus private universities. Here, this is two proportions. Think about we got two categorical variables. Do you study abroad or not? Do you study abroad or not? And then also, is there public or private university? Another way to think about this, if you have two proportions, you should be able to set up a two-way table we have the rows are one variable and the column is another variable. So here the columns could be study abroad or not and the rows could be public and private university for the students. Suppose you want to compare the proportion of in-state students at a university to the proportion from outside the state. So we'll make this more concrete. Say we're looking at SRJC, our college. Compare the proportion of in-state students at the JC and the proportion from out-of-state. How many variables are there? Just one. You're only asking, you know, a sample of students. Are you from in-state or from out-of-state? So this would be one proportion. So you want to compare the proportion of in-state students who get financial aid to the proportion of out-of-state students who get financial aid. You see, compared to the last example that was one proportion, this is two, because you still want to know whether students in state or out of state, that's one variable. But then you also want to know, do they get financial aid or not? So this is an inference for two proportions. All right, another, again, I want to kind of visualize what I mentioned. doing difference of proportions involves two categorical variables. I mentioned that earlier. So if we have data should be given in a two-way table. So something like this bigger. What I mean by two-way table is if you had some data should have something along the lines of this right here where we could take you know, in state out of state and you know, financial aid no financial aid so how we organize the data should be we would need at least two rows and two columns if we had a sample data so there's another way that helps to think about 
when you need one versus two proportions. Or we go back to the last example. Oh, sorry, we're, um, we're just heading state versus out of state. Notice if I had that, I'd only need these two rows. I don't need, I don't need this extra column over here. So that's going to be a one proportion scenario. All right, so here's the standard error formula for the difference of two proportions. Standard error is the square root, definitely a messier formula, of P1 times 1 minus P1 over N1 plus P2 times 1 minus P2 over N2. And the sample sizes do not have to be the same. These could be two different sample sizes. And we could use a normal distribution. So this notation means we could use normal distribution to approximate the difference of two, difference of two sample proportions by making the center the difference of the two population proportions. And then this is the standard error formula. It's a messy standard error formula. But a normal distribution is a good approximation as long as we have n times p is greater than 1, 10, n times 1 minus p is greater than 10, n2 times p2 is greater than 10, and n2 times 1 minus p2 is greater than or equal to 10. And the way I think about this is that means if we have two groups, two categories. If we were to organize the data in a two-way table, there should be at least 10 in each cell. So if we go back to this uh, visual right here, if we had an example, we would need all four of these values, these cells to be 10 or more in order to use the normal distribution. All right, let's say according to the 2006 Australian census, 25.5% of Australian women over the age of 25 have a college degree. And 21.4% of Australian men over age of 25 have a college degree. If we take random samples of 100 males and 100 females, find the standard error for p hat w minus p hat m. All right, and like I said, this formula is messy. So we have the standard error formula equals um, P1 times 1 minus P1. We're going to use uh, females or women that have a college degree as P1 and then divide it by 100. And then plus P2 times 1 minus P2 over 100. And you throw all this in your calculator, add them together, then do your square root. And you should get the standard error to be 0 0.06. Okay, I want to show you another way to get this value. All right, so like I said, I want to show you a, a slightly different way. Again, it's this formula, but they're um, a different online calculator will calculate this for us. And you have this option to use this in class during exams and all that. So another way to get this over here is to go to GeoGebra. So I Google G-E-O-G-E-B-R-A. GeoGebra should come up with the top choice in Google. And then you want to click on probability. If you recall, we use this um, in chapter P to do the binomial distribution. So this might look familiar distribution. But I'm going to use this for chapter six. At the top left, click on your statistics tab. And then we have a drop down menu here and we have all these options. Z test of a mean, T test of a mean, Z test, difference of means, and so on. But we want to do a difference of proportions. So I'm going to click Z test difference of proportions. Here's our uh, null alternative hypothesis, which we don't really need in this case. I just need our samples. Here we have sample one. And sample one is 25.5% of 100. So if I enter that in here, my number of successes, I take 25.5% times 100, that's 25.5 out of 100. And then my um, second proportion is 21.1% times 100. So that's 21.4 times 100 
click OK. Sometimes you have to click enter a couple times. And down here you have um, your sample data, standard error, z-score. We're going to come back to this later in this uh, video series. And then p-value. I guess we're going to come back to this later. But for right now, what this calculator does is throws in that formula that I just showed on the slides. And it puts in the, the uh, proportions and sample sizes to get our standard error, 0 0.0599. All right, just another approach to get this. I expect you to be able to calculate standard error, whether it's with this formula or with software. All right, there could be a problem though. This last example, we have a census. So we have the whole population parameter information. But generally, we don't know the um, population proportions. So one way to do that is to substitute p hat, which is our best guess for p. If you have a sample, we're going to use p hat. And that's what we're going to use for confidence intervals. So a confidence interval for difference proportions. Again, the general formula always works. It's your statistic plus or minus z star times standard error. And assuming these assumptions, assuming it is large enough so that I'm going to simplify these four statements as we have at least 10 successes and failures in both groups. Then a confidence interval for P1 minus P2, different proportions, can be computed with this formula. Take the difference of two sample proportions, plus or minus Z star. And remember, we only need to know the confidence level to get Z star. And then times the square root of the P hat 1 times 1 minus P hat 1 over N1 plus P hat 2 times 1 minus P hat 2 over N2. It's kind of a messy formula. Okay, in the next video, we're going to go over an example on how to calculate confidence intervals.